arrived at Vung Tau. Oh, not sorry, Vung Tau. Um, Saigon. Just to Tan Sanut, aren't you? Mm. Um, well, that description I gave you about you know, how I found it when I got off the aircraft. It was interesting, the, um, the uh, cabin crew of the, of the Qantas jet never got out, out of the jet. <laughs> And uh, we noticed it turned around and took off very quickly and uh, sort of left us there. But I was describing about, you know, the um, sort of the sound, the cacophony of sound. And, um, and also the other thing that, that was the first time I'd actually been into Southeast Asia. So the first thing, I, the other thing I noticed was, um, was actually the smell, um, which I think you'll find most people who go to that part of the world or any part of the world, they will talk about the unique smells of the... Um, and that was certainly true there. The thing that really struck me, though, um, was uh, there were some U.S. Army buses there to take us from where we disembarked from the Qantas aircraft around to an, another part of the airfield um, to where some U.S. Air Force planes were going to fly us down to Vung Tau. But these U.S. Army buses um, had wire meshing over the um, over the windows, and when we um, inquired why, because it sort of looked rather out of place. We weren't used to seeing it on, on any of our vehicles. Um, we were just told rather politely it was to stop the hand grenades being thrown through the windows, which again was another little subtle reminder that, um, you know, hey, this place isn't too friendly. Um, so anyway, the the buses then took us around to the far side and we um, of the airport and we then got on to um, some U.S. Air Force transport aircraft, and they flew us down to um, down to Vung Tau. Um, and at that st stage, that was mid-afternoon, and there was then a monsoon downpour. And um, whilst we had experienced similar things up in up in Queensland, it was the first time I think I'd experienced what a genuine monsoon you know, downpour was like. Um, I'd never seen rain like it, even here in Albany. It never got that heavy. Um, so they flew us down to uh, to Vung Tau, and um, when we landed there, uh, we were taken to a uh, an area um, out near a, a um, petroleum farm, uh, which struck us as being um, somewhat risky. <laughs> Um, being alongside all these big petrol tanks and um, sort of thinking, well, if the Viet Cong are as active as people say, then what the hell are we doing sitting alongside these damn great petrol tanks? But anyway, we went out there for a, for a um, um, and set up a temporary camp there because I was part of the advance party that went in um, and the rest of the regiment weren't coming up for about another another 10 days, 12 days. Who formed the advance party, Peter? There was the commanding officer of the regiment, um, the battery commander um, of the battery that I was in, and then I was the only other officer. And then we had, um, I think, about five or six soldiers with us. And the commanding officer had his own group, group with him. And that was um, the requirement on, on that on us was then to set up the area for the receipt of the whole regiment to come in. And what was that area? Uh, it was a piece of flat ground um, on the north eastern side of the Vung Tau airstrip and alongside a police training college, which was a fairly interesting experience in itself. Um, because when we'd gone through our training at Canungra, one of the th characteristics of the Viet Cong that we'd been told was that they generally dressed in sort of blue shirt or dark blue, navy blue or black um, shirt and cotton trousers and sort of what they called um, Michelin thongs. In other words, they're made out of tyres. And so that was our mental picture. And, and the... Um, you know, the typical coolie hat. So that was our mental picture of the Viet Cong. And so we, the first evening that we we had arrived and we got in, set up these, the, these tents, and we were next door to this police training, National Police Training College, and at about 5.30 in the afternoon, the gates opened, 
and out came this whole bunch of uh, Vietnamese um, police dressed in black <laughs> with curly hats and, and, um, and thongs on. And, uh, and, of course, we hadn't been prepared for it. And so just looking at these, I'm not sure what fell the furthest, our backsides or our hearts, but, uh, but it certainly gave us an, an excitement.